Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I have to start by this by saying that there is someone here who has Crocs that will compete with those. Who? Cool. A guy called Mike. He's upstairs at the moment. He might be down here now. Um, but we'll, we'll find him and we'll have the, a Croc off. <laughs> um, Mingwei, thank you so much for coming back. It's great to see you again. Um, as we said before with Eli, there are a few of our speakers that are uh, coming back to speak the second time today because this is a, a different audience, or in, in a lot of cases, a different audience, a new audience, um, and, and the focus is entirely for this session, the Pitch Perfect session, about brands and how to work with brands. We've heard from three brands already today uh, with two briefs, um, and what I'm keen to understand now is how you as a brand, as Ming Wei, how you work with brands, um, but also you have a very interesting story because you wear two hats as a, as a company founder and your company helps brands get on channels like TikTok and stuff. So, so let's start with you as Ming Wei. Um, which brands do you work with and how, how do you work with them? Um, I work with multiple brands. I think uh, gaming brands, food brands, like any brands, yeah. And can you, can you name them? Um, I work with Gojek before, like even like Drive transport app and I remember Car Rider. I worked with them before through agency. Um, and do, do, do they come to you or do you go to them? Oh, so there's multiple ways. So either they come direct through you or they go through an agency because nowadays many agencies does influencer marketing, be a PR agency, be a marketing agency. Anyone says they can do influencer marketing. And so, so they, they, they come to you and they say, hey, we want to work with you. But are there, are there occasions where you have said, I really like this brand, I want to go and work with them? Oh, yes, definitely. I think there are some brands that you are willing to do, not because of the amount, but because of the prestige of the brand. Because especially for rising creators at the start, it's harder to work with big brands. So sometimes it's good to get it into a portfolio, even though you're not being paid. Um, Ten deals later, no one knows whether that deal is paid or not. Yeah. It's a good point, and, yeah. and it, it, it shows endorsement and it shows relationship, right? And, yeah. and um, so, so, so what does, we've talked about the brands this morning wanting to work with creators, and, and, and I mentioned earlier, something that's been happening over the last few years is the, the relationship is changing where crea it used to be that media companies would pitch the brands or creators would pitch the brands. Now we're seeing a reversal where the brands are starting to pitch the creators. So for anyone who works for a brand, what advice would you give them to understand how to work with you? Um, I think first, see whether the creator fits you. Like, um, I think there are more PR-friendly brands who doesn't want to work with creators, who use profanities or bringing people down. Like anytime they might get into a scandal. So um, look for the right creators, I would say. Like if you are fashion, brand, you can look for fashion creators or you can go one step higher like lifestyle, not, not just on one niche but um, multiple niches but still related to each other. Yeah. Um, and, and then it, it seems it, 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 it's interesting where the, where the creator wants to work with the brand. Sometimes they don't, I mean sometimes the brand comes, you say no, right? Yeah, definitely. How often do you say no? 50% um, of the 50%? Time. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting because again 180 degrees ago, it was, it was more down to the money rather than whether you wanted to work with the brand or not. Now it's about your audience, right? You don't want to promote a brand that you don't like. Yes, I think most of the creators fall off when they decided to take on too much brand deals and then they will start to have a mentality where if I'm not getting this amount, I'm not making any content because I'm wasting my time making content. So that's when they get hooked into it that I have to keep doing branded deals and um, sometimes they, they might think, hey, in short term, I have like many deals, I, I can hire an editor now, and now you've got a team to support, and then now they realize that I need to pay someone, and they've got to keep doing it, yeah. Um, so, so do I need to have, was it 24 million followers on TikTok to be able to work with brands? Do I, do I have to be a big creator to work with brands? Uh, no, definitely. I think nowadays, um, especially for bigger creators, they ask for loading fees, they ask for like license fees. So if you are small creators, you are not so particular about that. There are many brands who are willing to work with you. So um, brands need content. So it may not be posting on your profile. You can be you making content for their profile. Yeah. So ha show of hands, how, how many people in the audience are creators or would define yourself as creators? 
How many from agencies? One? There's more than one. There's four of you sitting there. How many brands? How many government? <laughs> um, okay, so I think there's actually more creators here than you showed your hands. But, but um, see, but you don't, you, what you're saying is you don't need to have 24 million subscribers. You can have a, you, we, we talked about this the other week, you can have a thousand followers, right? Yeah, I think as long as you've got a uh, thousand, ten thousand, I see people earning like four figures a month. I see people earning five figures a month. It's just really how you work with the brand. I think people get so hooked up where the only way to work with a brand is through a brand deal on your profile, but there's mo more ways to that. Yeah. So I have uh, 521 followers on TikTok, yeah. Mingwei, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so I could make maybe three figures a year. Um, I think you can make f <laughs> up you can make more than that, definitely. Maybe yeah. I need to, the last time I posted on TikTok was 2016 when it was still musically. So maybe we, you and I need to talk backstage about this. Um, how, do, how do you measure, as a creator, we're going to talk about your business in a minute, but as a creator, how do you measure success when you're working with brands? Is it about the money? Is it about the, what, 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 what's success, what does success look like? Um, I think it depends. I think to me, the success is whether I'm able to bring the brand value, whether the objective is being hit. So when they want to have awareness, when I ask a few people, did they see that content? If they say they do, I feel that, yeah, I succeeded in helping to reach the awareness. But in terms of sales, I think it's more direct. You can see back end like with your code or after your video is being posted, is there an increase in sales? I think brands are able to track that, yeah. Um, and what are the... What are the common rookie errors? I mean, wh where, does, where, do people, wh where could people make mistakes and what advice would you give them to avoid those, those mistakes? For creators? Um, like in terms of brand? Yeah, wh wh I mean, wh where could it go wrong? Um, I think it could go wrong where sometimes they don't speak up for themselves. So they just follow entirely the brief and then they realize now you're making a content that is totally not what you do. Like, it's just like ad rather than the content. Where, where else for a creator, a content should be added on to like something existing that you have been doing because that's what your audience follows, follows you for. So um, if a content of at least like 10,000 views and suddenly you post like this advertisement, you're not going to get at least, you're going to get less than 10% of that. Yeah. So, so uh, the, the word authenticity comes through a lot, right? Yes, uh, definitely, yeah. So what you're saying is, is if if you don't believe in the brand, yeah. your audience is going to pick that up. De definitely, like I think one time you can you can pass it off one time, but then you if you think that after one time you can pass it off, you do the second time, the third time, the fourth time. One year later, you look at your profile, more than half is sponsored posts. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 your audience will go and find someone else to to follow, right? Um, yeah, I mean every day with the industry rising, there are more creators coming on board, and if you are not doing something special, they can just go to someone else. Yeah. So, so that, that's Ming Wei, the creator, yeah. the influencer, the TikToker, the, the, um, the YouTuber. Um, tell us about Ming Wei, the company owner, and how your company works with brands, because that's fascinating. Um, it depends what they need. We, if they need creators, we can find creators for them. If they need help in videos, we can help them. Yeah, basically do everything, <laughs> yeah. So, so you're helping brands get on to the, get into, how, helping them, how are you helping them get onto the platform? Um, I think there's a lack of, um, of where TikTok is rising. So there's, of course, not many people may know how to kickstart. So this is what we do. We help them get kickstarted and help them to make the first step. Then after that, pass it back to them if they want to do it themselves. Because to me, I believe when working with brands, it's all about value adding to them. So if they can do it themselves, I would say, do it yourself, yeah. <laughs> But so so, but if I'm uh, Coca-Cola, say yep. they're coming to you to say, how do I get onto onto TikTok? Yep. And then you're helping. Are you actually making the content for them, or you're just advising? Both. Yeah. It depends what help they need. Like I say, I always try to value add to brands. So if they whatever help they need with, we will always help them. Yeah. Sure. Um, and and okay. So so. And as that company, what kind of brands are you, are you able to say? What brands you're working with? Um, I'm proud to say Nando's. So we make them the top F&B brand in Singapore in TikTok. Nando's, yeah. cool. Yeah. So we should go there for lunch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and tell us um, 
uh, yeah, so the kind of so you're, you're helping them get onto the onto the platforms and stuff. Um, you're also your company also helps train young creators as well, right? Yes, correct. I think um, Alex Alex spoke like from NAS, so I work closely with them to help more budding creators. So we have helped a few creators turn to full-time content creators, and some of them earn like six figures a month. So I'm quite happy to see the results. Yeah, fantastic. And and and. Um, but you're also taking them going from small followings to quite big yep. followings quite quickly, right? Yes, correct. So, <coughs> yeah, so we also have a team where we can help creators to grow from zero to a million, like in a short period of time. Yeah, because we, yeah, we. Okay, so the clock, the clock's ticking. <laughs> I have 521 followers on TikTok. Yep. What do I need to do to get to a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million? Keep posting. <laughs> I mean, more than once every six years. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 keep going. So, so, keep posting. So, posting daily, weekly, monthly. I think it's up to you. Like, I think you don't have to stress yourself out that you've got to post daily or like monthly. Like for me, I post once a week. If there's something that you can handle mentally, then just go for it. Like I reached a point last time I posted every day, and you got burned out. Like after six months, right. it's just, yeah. So, so weekly is a nice number. Do, do you do it same time, same day, same week? Um, I think don't stress yourself so much about that. And I think the best posting timing is normally what most of the creators ask. But um, the best posting timing is actually where your audience are from. So when you've got 1,000 followers, when you've got 10,000 followers, your audience changes. So there's no best posting timing, but rather what is the most active timing your audience are at. Yeah. And the four, I, I know we talked about this, you, you, you talked about this yesterday with, with Jim, but formats are important as well. One size does not fit all. Yes, correct. Yeah. Don't put the same content in all platforms. <laughs> so, an example, let, let's say we were making a, some content for, for Vans, for, for Eli. Um, what would the content look like on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram? Um, I think it depends whether is it reels or is it not reels. I think short form content are generally quite um, similar to each other. So, I would reuse them actually, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> and then, then I think um, really just going back to M Ming Wei and, and the creator and, and the, okay. the subject of working with brands, yeah. um, what advice would you give to the young creators here oh. of how to, how to work with brands? What, what, give us like three, three, three words of advice, three, three points of advice. For creators to grow or to work with brands? To work with brands. To work with brands. Um. Be authentic. I think that's the thing. Like, don't ever fall off to the brief and start to. Where 30 seconds, like half of a video is going to be like all sponsored messages. Don't do that. Like, yeah, you can put in the comment section. You can put it. Um, just you can put more details in the comments if you want to know. But ultimately, I think focus on the content more. Yeah, and. When it comes to working with brands, I think keep it open. Like you don't, not every deal needs to be like high paying. Like you can be like look, like not so high paying, but it's the brand you want to work with that will help to increase your branding overall. Because if you limit yourself to oh I have to hit this price before I hit a deal, yeah, you'll, you'll be getting one deal every like few months. So why not get a consistent like income and continue going on? Yeah, Fantastic. and for every piece of branded content, try to put a few non-branded content, so it doesn't seem like a whole chunk is branded content, yeah. So, so and it, I guess it is that, that, that wonderful word, authenticity. Um, and and so, so some brilliant insights here. It's good to start small. Um, don't be, I mean, if you've got a thousand followers, fantastic. It's twice as many as I've got. <laughs> um, love the brands that you're working with. Be authentic, don't stress about it. Drive the narrative, I think that's important. This is, this is a, a very key, point that comes from a lot of the creators we talk to <clears throat> and work with is they're not going to be given a storyboard by a brand and be told what to do. They need to tell the brand how they want to treat the, the, the brand. Um, keep it open and don't do it all the time. Yep. Brilliant. Well, Mingwei, thank you so much for, for coming back and joining us again today. Thank you. Um, the largest TikToker in Southeast Asia. Mingwei, thank you so much. Thank you.